A few weeks ago, Sigma announced three new lenses in a collection they have dubbed the iSeries. And of the three lenses announced, I was lucky enough to get an early hands-on with the 65mm f2 lens, and if you'd like to see that review, then be sure to open this link up here in a new tab and watch it later on. This week, however, I've got my hands on another one of these brand new iSeries lenses, namely the 35mm f2 DG DN contemporary lens, and I've been putting it through its paces to see what this lens is really capable of. As we found out in the 65mm f2 review, these i-series lenses have been designed to be small and lightweight, and although at first I was a little bit confused by the choice of 65mm as a focal length because, you know, 65mm, that classic focal length that everyone goes for. <clears throat> anyway, luckily for us, the 35mm f2 that we're testing today is much more of a standard focal length, and we recently tested out the other Sigma 35s in their range as well, namely the f1.2 version and the f1.4, so we already have a pretty good idea of what you can achieve with this type of lens, and also what the benchmark is in terms of handling and image quality if this lens is going to be taken seriously by pros and amateurs alike. Anyway, Tom, that's enough talking because I always manage to start rambling off about stupid things and not actually get into the test. So let's look at the specs for this brand new 35 millimeter lens. When this lens hits the shelves in January 2021, it's gonna be priced at 549 pounds or $639, which let's face it means that it isn't the cheapest lens in the world, especially considering it only has a maximum aperture of f2 rather than f1.4 or 1.2 like the other 35 mils. However, hopefully once we go through more of the specs, you'll see why Sigma have come to this price point. Now, I think it's fair to say that Sigma lenses have always been highly regarded for their build quality, but this thing, along with the other lenses in the i-series range, have definitely taken things up another notch for sure. This lens is almost entirely made from metal. The body, the lens mount, the focus ring, and even the lens hood itself are made from a textured metal. It also comes with a pretty fancy magnetic lens cap, which I actually find really nice to use. However, if this type of thing doesn't really float your boat, then Sigma do also include a regular plastic snap-on cap in the box too. Despite Despite its metal build, this lens weighs just 325 grams or 11.46 ounces, so it is incredibly lightweight. So much so that when it's mounted to my Sony a7 Mark III, it actually makes my camera feel slightly back heavy, which is honestly a first for me as I'm used to working with much heavier prime lenses on a day-to-day -day basis. On the lens body itself, there is a manual aperture dial which clicks nicely at each third of a stop. However, unlike the other Sigma Prime releases that we've seen this year that have featured a D-click switch to allow you to rack through the aperture range in one smooth motion, there is no such thing on this lens, which means that might be slightly bad news for videographers who like this type of feature. This dial can also be switched to automatic mode, which is noted as an A, and this allows the lens to function more like a standard lens where you can adjust the aperture value using the back of your camera. However, there is no lock switch for this dial, so that means you don't have the ability to just lock it into auto mode if you don't want to use it and just forget it even exists. So the big downside to this is that it means that the dial can be accidentally knocked from auto onto some random aperture value in your bag or whilst you're carrying it on a camera strap by your side. Also on the side of the lens barrel, there's an MF to AF switch, which has a slightly new design and operates with a very satisfying click. Finally, on the lens mount, there's a small rubber O-ring that provides weather sealing to prevent dust and moisture getting inside your camera with the lens mounted. Okay, it's that time again. Let's head over to the lens chart to see what this thing can do when it comes to image quality. When shooting wide open at f2, we can see that at the edges of the frame, there is a small amount of barrel distortion as well as some vignetting, but nothing really that dramatic. Zooming into the center, we can see that this lens is fairly sharp. It's not the sharpest lens I've ever tested, but it's really not bad at all. The good news though is that there are no signs of fringing at all in the center. Moving over to the corners and things start to get a little bit smudgy here and there is a touch of purple and green fringing starting to appear, but overall it's a pretty good performance from this lens. To really put this lens through its paces, I decided to take this new 35 millimeter lens out for a spin in the real world to see how it handled.
Just like the 65mm f2, I was really impressed with this lens from start to finish. It's lightweight and small frame made it an absolute joy to use. In terms of image quality, it didn't disappoint either, providing lovely sharp images with a nice fall off in the background. Now, obviously, it kind of goes without saying that with only a maximum aperture of f2, when shooting wide open, you're not going to get a super shallow depth of field with this lens like you would with the other Sigma 35s, like the 1.4 or the 1.2 versions, but the results you do achieve are certainly not bad. In our bokeh balls test, this lens creates nice round orbs at the center, which then turn elliptical as they near the edges of the frame. In terms of AF performance, this 35mm was almost faultless. IAF and face detection both work extremely well with this lens and it was able to keep focus even when the subject was moving around. In terms of lens speed and accuracy, this lens was able to switch focus between near and far subjects in an instant without any signs of hunting. In low light conditions, the performance was pretty much the same. It took the AF reticle a little bit longer to light up green just to confirm that the focus was locked on, but really not enough to be an issue. As for AF noise, just like the 65mm f2 that we tested a few weeks ago, there just really is none. Switching over to video, and this lens was able to track a moving subject coming towards the camera with absolutely no problems at all. It provided the same great results when the subject was moving at a faster pace too. So with all of the testing done, what is my verdict on this lens? Well, just as I kind of expected, the 35mm is just as good as its 65mm sibling in the i-series family. It's a beautifully crafted lens and it would be an awesome choice for anyone looking to travel light, but who is also willing to spend a little bit more to gain better build quality and image quality compared to some other cheaper plastic lenses on the market. Of the two i-series lenses that I've tested so far, I've kind of got to admit this 35mm is the one that I would probably purchase as a travel lens because whenever I go on holiday, I really like to bring my camera along with me, but I also hate having to carry a bag full of heavy glass everywhere. So having something that's lightweight, that's small, uh, has a versatile focal length like the 35 millimeter, and is also built really solidly is definitely an appealing proposition for me. The big question that's burning a hole in the back of my mind is how does this 35 millimeter stack up against the f1.4 and the f1.2 versions in Sigma's lineup? I guess that's a question we'll have to answer in another video. If you would like to see that, be sure to let me know in a comment below. And if we get enough people who say that they want to see it, we'll definitely make that happen for you. For now though, guys, that's about all I have for you in this review video. As always, if you've liked this video, then please don't forget to show your love by giving it a thumbs up and also subscribing to the channel if you haven't already to make sure that you don't miss out on any future content and I will see you all in the next one. I'm just going to come in for a closer. <laughs> oh, Did you see the owls? <laughs>